Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I wanted to talk about the independent rear suspension found in some of the Cobras. And then uh, the solid rear axle that's found in basically all the other Mustangs. Uh, so first off with the IRS, let's talk about that. Uh, it was found in the 1999 Cobra, uh, the 2000 Cobra R, the 2001 Cobra, uh, there were only a handful of 2002 Cobras that all went to Australia, and those had the uh, independent rear suspension in them. And uh, then the 03, 04 Cobras all came with the independent rear suspension. So it wasn't so much uh, an option for the Cobra, it was standard uh, equipment for it. And something to mention about uh, the uh, independent rear suspension in these Cobras is that in 1999, it was a 28-spline uh, set up and so it wasn't quite as strong. You can actually find them for about $700 if you can find them for sale. Sometimes they sell pretty cheap. Uh, anywhere from uh, from that up, the 2000 Cobra R, the 01 Cobra, the 03, 04 Cobras, they were a 31 spline axle uh, shaft count. And uh, in a way it's kind of deceiving because it's 31 splines where it enters the carrier and goes into the differential, but it's still 28 spline on the other, on the other side. So. Um, the thing about the IRS though is they, you know, they've been known to break because of uh, axle hop. So if, if you take it to the drag strip and you don't get out of it when it starts to hop, and I've actually seen this firsthand uh, happen to a Cobra, and uh, if you don't get out of it, it will snap that axle shaft. And it's not so much the power level from the car, but it's the harmonics of the vibration as it's shaking. Uh, I actually saw two Cobras snap their axle shafts that way. Um, basically, the owner got into it, it started to axle hop, and instead of uh, getting out of it, he just kept his foot planted and, and just snapped the shaft. And it snaps uh, kind of near the little U-joint in the middle. So it's not really breaking the actual splines, um, it's, it's more that har harmonics that will break it. So uh, anyway, the uh, IRS was you know, kind of an SVT only thing. Uh, it went away when the GT500 came out and they had solid rear axle back in it. And uh, now that the GT350 is out, it, they went back to an independent rear and uh, I'd say the new GT500 likely will have the uh, independent rear suspension as well. Uh, so independent rear is more for you know uh, the track use as far as like a circuit track going around you know not not your straight uh, drag strip but you know your your autocross and that kind of thing. So um, as far as driving on the street, I really like the independent rear suspension on my Cobra. Um, I don't take this car to uh, the drag strip often and launch it hard or anything. And uh, with that said, I actually like the independent rear suspension quite a bit. I feel like when you get on it, as you roll into the throttle, that it squats really nice and uh, you can feel the flex in it. I, I think it's a, a really good setup to have. Even in a straight line. Uh, just as long as you're staying out of you know dead launches with it, uh, with sticky tires, I, I think it's a great setup. Uh, so moving on to the solid rear axle, um, basically uh, if you look at the two you'll know why they call this the solid rear and they call this independent rear. Independent rear suspension, each of the arms uh, are independently operated. Uh, you have suspension on each side that's uh, allowing each side to lift and raise where on a solid rear axle, being that it's basically one solid piece, the whole thing kind of will bounce around but it'll stay straight and that's why they'll also call that a straight axle. Now with the straight axles, um, the only problem is on these new edge Mustangs, uh, it was a 28 spline axle shaft on all of them. So um, Ford did offer a 31 spline on some of their other solid axles for that same year age era, but it was like in the Eddie Bauer Explorers. <laughs> so if you're looking to go a 31 spline axle with four tens and you get lucky, you might be able to find an Eddie Bauer edition Explorer in a junkyard um, it, and they had the 31 spline axles and 410s so if you're looking to go solid rear axle that might be uh, an option for you. 
Um, but anyway, with that said, the 28 spline uh, axle shaft is uh, somewhat a weak point uh, in these cars. It's not really that bad, uh, and there are some things you can do about it. I had Alloy USA half shafts or axle shafts that I put in my Mach 1 before I built the rear end on it, and it held up actually really well. My brother has the, those axle shafts in his supercharged bullet, and he's been into the 12s, uh, almost into the 11s with that car, and that's just Las Vegas for you. But uh, anyway, um, it's held up fine. So you can make the 28 spline axles uh, set up work as long as you upgrade your half shafts to some hardened steel ones. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about um, the cost involved in these. The independent rear suspension is a lot more expensive and not just an expensive system but it's expensive to maintain. If you go to look at all the bushings that are involved in upgrading those, uh, there's a really good, uh, there's really good uh, company, FTBR, Full Tilt Boogie Racing. They do a lot with the IRS and, and help people reach a lot of goals with those cars. Uh, but those bushings can be up to $1,000 just for that alone. So uh, what I have here is my build sheet uh, for when I built the Mach 1's rear end. And that's a full 31 spline uh, upgrade, Moser shafts, 410's, studs. I mean, it, you know, I got the Ford diff cover and everything, the girdle, one of my favorite aftermarket pieces ever. And I have a video on that I'll put in the link of how to build the rear end if you're interested in seeing what's involved. Um, but anyway, the point is for $1,000 in parts, um, I built the whole solid rear, rear axle. Uh, you can also weld the tubes where they're pressed in. I'd, I'd recommend that if the car is going to see the uh, drag strip heavily. Um, but anyway, going back to cost, the Cobra, you're going to be $1,000 alone uh, in the IRS with bushings and, and all that before you even get into the half shafts, which can easily be $1,500 a piece and so on. Uh, now, once you do upgrade it, you, you can hit some pretty good numbers with uh, an independent rear. I have a friend of mine, Jeff Smith. He has the Competition Orange Cobra, uh, TVS powered, and he's been into the nines uh, with the independent rear suspension. So it is possible, and um, it's something cool to consider if you like the originality of the car. Uh, which is another reason I'd keep it IRS, uh, just for originality purposes. And um, also if you like the way that it, it drives with the IRS, uh, it is a little smoother of a ride. It's a little bit better around corners and daily driving and, and track use, uh, circuit track use in that way. Uh, solid rear axle, definitely that's the cheap way to go. You can pick those up in the junkyard for like 80 bucks if you're lucky, maybe a little more than that. but. Uh, and as I said, you can build the whole thing for $1,000. Um, so a solid rear axle is definitely something to consider if you're going to be going to the track and going in a straight line all the time. Um, it definitely handles better than the IRS and going, um, you know, launching the car. Um, and with the independent rear suspension, it's that axle hop is what is what kills you. And there are ways around that. I have another friend uh, who had an independent rear suspension, and he added these airbags that he could fill up to keep that arm on the independent rear from from moving as much. So there are ways to to beef up the independent rear suspension, but once again, it's going to be a lot more time and money. So uh, the solid rear axles we mentioned, 28 spline on on all of the new edge and older Mustangs. So um, you're going to have to really be doing some upgrading on that. Uh, it'll cost you about $1,000 if you do it right with all the parts and then you have the installation labor unless you watch my videos and, and do it yourself. But uh, something else I want to talk about with IRS is what it's going to do to your retail value. Uh, so with a Cobra, and I'll admit even when I was looking at Cobras, uh, you know, six years ago, whatever it was. Uh, I was, whenever I saw one that had solid rear axle in the description, I got a little nervous because I knew that that car probably saw a fair amount of time at the drag strip. Not a bad thing, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of tracking with the car and it's already there, that might be a, a selling point for you. <clears throat> as far as uh, originality goes though, I'd, uh, I'd be a little worried about it because um, knowing how easy it is to snap these half shafts. Um, you know, years down the road when somebody's looking at a Cobra to buy, if they're looking at a low mile example or looking to spend some good money on it, 
that's probably one of the things they'll ask. They'll say, is it still six speed and is it solid rear axle or does it have the, you know, the stock independent rear in it? So I'd, I'd be prepared um, to do that. So a thought that I had with my Cobra, just for fun, because uh, one of the, at, there's gonna be a few crossroads roads you're gonna get to. And so as the independent rear suspension starts to wear out, you're going to get to that point where you're going to have to decide, do I put a thousand dollars worth of bushings alone in this thing? Or do I go ahead and just build a solid rear and put it in there for the same price and keep or sell uh, the independent rear that's in there? Because you, you literally can take the independent rear out of a Cobra, sell it for about $1,500 and build and keep, uh, you know, a solid rear axle and have a little extra money when you're done. So that's I think that's the temptation. Um, I don't think I'd ever sell my IRS on this one. I had a spare one that I parted out, um, but uh, it, I did have the thought that hmm, maybe I could take the independent rear out of the Cobra, uh, build a solid rear to drive around on, and then I have the nice IRS that's you know low mile and good condition over in the corner that I could put back in. So that's a thought that you can have to consider. Uh, where I only do a thousand miles or so a year on the car, I'm not that concerned about it anymore. Um, you know, I realized I don't drive it enough to really destroy it that much. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to do: is just keep the Cobra's uh, IRS. Uh, but that's a that's a definitely a thought, and I know a lot of Cobra owners have done that: just pulled the whole IRS and sold it and built a, a solid rear with the money, and they got what they needed out of it, and maybe even had a little extra cash left over. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the 99 Cobras are the 28 spline axles on both sides, so you do want to be careful not to um, just jump to a, a 99 Cobra IRS uh, with a Terminator and its current power levels. Uh, that could probably be uh, a problem for you. So let's talk about how uh, easy it is to swap these two. Uh, you can literally take the IRS right out of the Cobra and bolt it up to the Mach 1. Take the solid rear axle out of the Mach 1 or GT, put it right into the Cobra. Uh, it's really not that bad, it's just undoing the drive shaft, some of the suspension components and control arms, and just dropping it straight down. And I have videos on uh, taking off the solid rear axle. I don't have one on the Cobra, but it's actually a lot easier with the IRS. Just make sure you have a good jack system under there because it all comes out basically as one piece and it's pretty heavy. Uh, you're gaining uh, 80 pounds. Uh, savings if you're putting the solid rear into the into the Cobra that IRS weighs about 80 pounds more um, but anyway it's actually a pretty straightforward swap one to the other they bolt right up however there are a few things you need to change uh, one there's a difference in length on the drive shaft so you sometimes you can get away with changing the actual u-joint um, on the back of the drive shaft to make up that difference um, sometimes it's better just to get a different uh, drive shaft itself and uh, some people have even cut their drive shaft and re-welded it to the correct size, so um, that's possible too. But there will be a difference there, and also you'll notice the uh, ABS system is a little bit different. The wires plug in under the seat of the car, and so you take out the seat, and that's where you can pull the harness through. Um, but the independent rear suspension ABS wires are basically right near the differential. Uh, the ABS rings are right there where they plug in. And then uh, on the solid rear, you have to go all the way to the end of the axle where um, that's where the ABS ring is and that's where the sensor connects. And I have videos on, on that as well, I'll throw in the description. Um, but anyway, you can straightforward just swap them over with a few changes and, and have it your way. So it all comes down to what your goals are with a car. If you want a track car, autocross, uh, you want something that's a little nicer on the street, then you can go with the independent rear suspension. If you want a, a track car that's going to be launching hard all the time, I'd, I'd definitely consider a built solid rear axle. Uh, so anyway, go ahead and put in the comments what you think. Uh, let me know, you know, which way that you're you're going. Let me know if you've done the swap and what you think about it. Uh, I own both setups. Uh, I own an IRS car and a solid rear car, and so I I know pretty well. I like the Cobra how it drives on the street. I know it squats really well when you roll into the throttle. And uh, I know with the solid rear, it's kind of a carefree, just you know, just drop the clutch and go kind of thing. So uh, there are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, like I said, you can take your IRS out, put it in the corner and keep it because they're gonna be worth something someday. And uh, you might wanna do that before you have to dump a lot of money into it if you're daily driving the car all the time. 
Um, but on the other hand, you could take the IRS out, sell it, and uh, build a, si a solid rear axle with the same money, uh, if not come out on top. And so that's, I think that's why people uh, commonly will drop that uh, independent rear out of the Cobra, is they just can get what they want out of it. Um, as mentioned earlier, you can pick up a 99 Cobra, act, you know, whole IRS setup for around seven, eight hundred dollars. The 0304 Cobra IRS is going for typically eleven hundred dollars or even a little bit higher. So uh, that's what you can expect to, to spend on those. So anyway, let me know what you think and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.